going guys Seth Holocron here from the Dongers of Rintera and welcome to a thought process that I've had for a little while and you can probably see the thought process on screen so ships are a totally non-used mechanic in Legends of Rintera apart from Swain with Leviathan, which is an absolutely brilliant competitive combo deck. You can team up Swain with almost anybody, have three Swains, three Leviathans and almost win the game because he's dealing damage at the next round start three times to the Nexus, which stuns three units. And if you get damage in at all on top of that then the units explode and Swain's leveled and, and it's just brilliant it's so good and that's why Swain is starting to really re-enter the meta which is fantastic but the other three uh, the Saren, the Tusk Raider and the Dreadway don't see competitive play at all and I was chatting with a few friends and we were just texting away about why these cost so much mana and don't really do anything you know this um you draw misfortune and then when it attacks all your spells and skills deal one extra damage but it costs seven and it's not really well studded okay it scouts that helps misfortune but it's it's not great tusk rider double the power and health of all your allies in, in the deck which for fray lord is excellent and when you play it you draw swish army so that's pretty good but you need to plunder to get uh, the power and health of allies in your deck. And then the Dreadway, which is the most expensive ship in the game, has Fearsome, and it doubles all damage dealt by your skills, spells, and allies. And it also draws a Gangplank, because it's Gangplank's ship. Okay. As you may or may not know, I like making off-meta decks that have got possibilities of becoming meta. But I like to do them really weird. So why on earth would you put in the Dreadway and build a deck that doesn't draw Gangplank? I mean, that's just stupidity right out the gate, isn't it? Well, no. Not if you're going to make a combo deck. And the combo deck doesn't involve Gangplank. Just hear out the thought process. If you can pull off the combo in this deck, you automatically win. Now, that's a big statement, but that's what combo decks do. They stall out, they play really slow, so we're getting to at least round 9, round 10, round 11 before this deck wins. But it always wins, and I've tested it, and I like it, so I'm sharing it, because we don't keep decks from you guys, because that's how games evolve. So let's go into decks. And right down at the bottom is the Dreadway deck. So let's see what we actually have in here. And the thought process behind this deck is very, very simple. Be slow. Be slow and sort of play like an Ezreal deck. So we've got a ton of spells in here. 32 cards from Bilgewater. It from Shadow Isles. But this is not a Shadow Isles deck. The cards from Shadow Isles keep you alive to stall out the game. So as you can see, 12 spells, 28 units, and 3 champions. Because we're only running 1 champion. And that is the very amazing Twisted Fate. And Twisted Fate is absolutely brilliant in this deck. Like, so good. Because the amount of cards units and spells in here draw cards and we need card draw now not a ton of card draw but enough card draw that we get our finishing combo in our hands pretty much as quickly as we can this is a deck where you want the combo pieces almost from mulligan but not quite but if you get them hold them because that's the win condition of this deck. So let's go through the entire thing. I based the deck around Dreadway, which is why it's called the Dreadway deck. And I used a pretty well formulated 
bilgewater type deck. So we're obviously going to have uh, three warning shots. And that will become apparent later as why we are running these. It's not like we're running Gangplank. So that's an automatic three of. But for free, to do damage to the Nexus can end a game, can do tons of good things, can set up plunder effects. And our plunder effects are quite a lot. So if we look at the first two units in the deck, we have Jagged Butcher, the best 1-1 one, one drop in Runeterra. That's it. Plunder, grant me 1-1. One, one. So if you have a Warning Shot in your opening hand and a Jagged Butcher in your opening hand, he's a 3-3. Three, three. And that is the best one standard unit in the game. Doesn't matter if it's on offense or defense, the warning shot in the Jagged Butcher is one of the best solid opening round one plays in any deck, which is why it's a three of. Added to which, we've also got a Black Market Merchant, one of my favorite two drops in the game. So when you draw an enemy card, you reduce its cost by one. Uh, but if you plunder, you nab one, which is brilliant. Like, that's brilliant and that effect keeps going so every time you draw an enemy card reduce its cost by one so obviously i'm going to be running pilfered goods right well no even my even my webcam fell down with sadness because this is not a plunder deck this is a combo deck and that's completely different so how can we make things good? Well, another really good thing to do in Bilgewater are powder kegs. And powder kegs are fantastic. So if you drop this for two mana, your warning shot now does two. Which is excellent. Which can really make a difference. And you get a solid 2-2 unit as well. So a really good chump blocker. Or an extra two damage. Or just board state presence. Because in the early games, the first five, six rounds, you want to have as wide a board as possible to stay alive. So like any of the good combo decks, you get your units out. So like spiders, and you know, they go wide. And this deck just wants to have enough bodies to keep things all okay. You can even use your powder keg at a push to block something coming in. If you have no spells anyway, it's an amazing jump blocker as it, you know, it doesn't go pop. It's not like a caustic cask, but it's a solid little thing. But it's much better if you can hit for two, three times. And that's when the keg starts really showing its true, true, true power. Because now you're hitting things with two health and killing them. And maximizing all the sort of stuff. So people say, well, why aren't you going to put in Ezreal and then make a... Well, because it does exactly the same thing. Well, there's doing one or two. It's just targeting units. So, to my mind, Ezreal doesn't fit in this deck at all. Just does not fit in this deck one bit. And then let's keep this whole idea of draining stuff to get units. So I went into the best region for making units and that is Val Feast, which is a phenomenal card your uh, nexus goes up by one you can often kill another unit and you get a, a spider to chump block with that is two mana of anyone's mana sp spell count well spent really well spent especially if you can get it before they attack that's excellent and then we go to Petty Officer. Now, Petty Officer got buffed in a recent patch. And uh, he's now a 3-2. And you can summon a Powder Keg or a random one-cost follower. Now, nine times out of ten, people are playing the Petty Officer and taking the one-cost follower. But this time... This time, the Powder Kegs would probably be better. Because the more Powder Kegs you can lift up, the more dynamic your spells will be an awful lot more like ridiculously more so my suggestion as i have built this is to drop the keg because people target kegs and if they're targeting kegs they're not targeting your units which means that you're freed up to actually put your units to stop things actually going in where you don't want them to go 
So defensively, this is a brilliant deck. Offensively, it's a brilliant deck. And the reason it's a brilliant deck is because we went for the next card, which is Twisted Fate. And Twisted Fate will level in this deck. And an awful lot of Twisted Fate decks don't want to level them or can't level them, which kind of makes you go, well, then why is the guy in the deck? This is going to draw cards a lot. Like, and it will draw cards a lot. And you will see as we go through the deck how easy it is for him to actually draw cards. You've also got to remember that when you drop him down, you can take the blue spell and refill a mana and draw a card. You can hit the red spell, do two to uh, uh, one to everything, or the yellow one, which is, you know, disaster and, and all that sort of stuff. He's brilliant. Now, yes, he's two health. Yes, he's mystic shot. Yes, yes, I, I'm well aware of all of this. But he is so good in this deck to draw cards. So I normally play him with the blue spell. Regardless of what's across the, the the battlefield of choice for you, get the mana. The mana helps. Keeping mana efficiency in this deck is utterly, utterly critical. And you'll see why as I drop it on down. So let's go to the next one, which is Yordle Grifter, which is another warning shot in hand, a solid 3-3, you know, and if it's allegiance, you're going to get what you need. And with the fact that we've only got eight, around 50% of the time, you will nab a card just by dropping your little grifter. That's another thing to level up Twisted Fate. Let's keep our mana up. So then we're definitely playing Zap Spray Finn. Um, the four cost here let me show you what this guy does he refills one spell mana that's why he's in the deck we need spell mana a lot it's really critical and key to winning with this deck and into which he's an elusive so he's doing nexus damage unless you're up against an elusive deck and that's solid like that is superbly solid I love Grasp of the Undying, and I normally, in Shadowwise decks, run threes of, but this isn't a Shadowwise deck. This is just something really to heal. But if you can kill a unit, or wound a unit, or stop something coming through and gain three extra Nexus health on your side, that's worth a one of. I think it's a great card. It's slightly over-costed. I'd like to see this go day four, to be honest. But at five, still very, very solid. And as you've seen, there are ways of us remaking mana to make it much more cost-efficient, which is great. Added to which, I mean, this is an Ezreal card now, but again, we need to stall the game. Like, we have to stall the game. So being able to do... The Twisted Fate card that deals one to all enemies without hitting the Nexus, because we're hitting the Nexus whenever we like the spells, and healing three, that's why this is a two of. Because this one only gives you three from one unit, this is one from everything. So against lower cost things like elusives and spiders and all the things that are starting to come back up again, because Endure is now back in the deck, uh, uh, in, the, in the meta, uh, with atrocity and all that sort of stuff. Yes, you're building up the atrocity. You don't really need to worry about atrocity. You don't really need to worry about endure. We have a far better thing that people are just not going to see coming. And this is a surprise combo. Okay? Which is why we've added in this. And this little card doesn't get played at all. Like, this is not in a deck. This isn't in a competitive deck. Smooth Suloist. Oh. I have a deep love for elusive units. A very deep love for elusive units. But there hasn't really been an elusive deck that utilizes this at all. And that's okay. I mean, that's, that's completely fine. 
Now imagine you're playing against a Damasia deck or a Noxus deck and they can't they don't have any way at all of stopping your elusive units, of which we have Zap and the Soloist. So we can be doing five damage straight to Nexus. Now imagine that you've got this guy. So we're nabbing one because we've plundered. And reducing its cost by one. Doing the five damage. And then this lady reduces the cost of all allies in your hand and your deck by two. That's why she's in this deck. Because we have expensive cards. We have game enders that cost up to nine. And we have three of those. And we have three Riptide Rexes. If they're in hand or in the deck, your Riptide Rex is now a six. Your Ledros is a seven. And so is your Dreadway. Because, you know, that's the thing. We all know how good a warning shot into Riptide Rex is. And that's pretty much outside of the butchers and the black markets and the Dreadways and the petty officers and all that sort of stuff. I mean, those are standard cards in Bilgewater decks. And so is Riptide Rex. So you get your seven cannon barrage and it's almost game over right away. So this is your secondary win condition. Play it like a Bilgewater deck. But that's not the real reason why it's in there. It's very, very secondary, but has won me games before, so I'm not going to knock it. But the real thing is that Ledros was phenomenal at being a game ender, and that's what a control deck had. We had Ledros decks, we had Rasa decks, we had Endure decks, and we had Corvina decks. And they just stalled out and stalled out until they hit the table, and when they hit the table, Nine times out of ten, you've won the game. And this guy is not only fearsome in a 9-6, you deal damage to the enemy nexus equal to half its health, rounded up. Deal damage to the enemy nexus equal to half its health, rounded up. Then if he dies, it goes back to your hand. So he's literally an undying unit. That's fantastic. Until you realise this is the combo. Get this on board. I am not putting two of them in. Because there are other win conditions. You can win and play this like a standard bilge water deck. But the dread way doubles all your damage dealt by skills, spells and allies. It doesn't matter what happens. Everything, any spell, any skill, any ally printed thing on it. The only thing this card doesn't do is draw a Gangplank, because Gangplank isn't in the deck. And I don't want Gangplank in the deck. I want Twisted Fate in the deck. And if you then think about everything that you can now do, that is now six from a unit. That's deal two to all enemies and heal your Nexus six. Warning shots are doing two. Um, that's just amazing. It, I mean, it's like, it's amazing. It's amazing. This has maybe found a hole. And the deck code for this and a link to our Discord are in the pinned comments. I know this is 20 minutes, but this is a brand new concept, and I think this card can do great things. It is a combo deck, and it's sort of aggressive. If you're playing against an aggressive deck, then be, play defensive. If you're playing against a control deck, you really, really want that smooth soloist out, so all your things are like two cost less, and just go wide until you can drop the big boys. My name is Seth Holocron. This is the Dreadway deck, and let's see if we can make it really good in the meta. If you like the video, thumbs up. If you really like it, subscribe. And until the next time, dongers out.